Ethics with S. Ansari remains the best ever choice. Do you know that ethics paper is the only paper in general studies that pays more with less efforts? One can easily secure 130 to 140 marks. Lukman IS is a well established name since 2014 for ethics paper. We offer three types of courses ethics foundation course, ethics case studies, and ethics test series. Since 2015, Lukman IAS students have maintained the records of securing the highest marks in this paper. So, why to wait? Contact us today for more information. Hi everyone, I am Dilip K. Kainikara and I secured All India Rank 21 in UPSC Civil Service 2021 exam. My optional is mathematics and here I would like to provide a brief outline of my mathematics preparation journey. But before that, let me briefly address a question that has often been posed to me like, who should choose mathematics? Uh, which type of students should ideally choose mathematics as an optional subject? So what I would say is, there are three factors here. One is definitely your interest. Like if you have a genuine interest in mathematics, if you are a person who enjoys solving mathematical problems, then definitely mathematics is an optional you can consider. And secondly, it comes to your aptitude. Because just interest won't do. Uh, you need a brief, uh, at least a good background in mathematics uh, or in a mathematics related subject. For example, I am a beta graduate from IIT Madras and even before that uh, I am coming uh, solely from a mathematical stream of study. So that has uh, helped me a lot even uh, during my uh, UPSC preparation. Like around 50% of my mathematics syllabus had been covered in various electives and other topics during my beta uh, studies. So that is again something you can consider like whether your background is suitable for mathematics. Uh, if you are a B.Tech graduate in any discipline or if you have a B.Sc or M.Sc in mathematics or a scientific related scientific discipline, then definitely your background is suitable for mathematics and you can definitely consider it. And third is every optional comes with a trade-off. Like when we think about Max, we know that it has nearly zero overlap with other subjects. It won't help you in GS or it won't help you in answer writing and also you will have to invest a good amount of time into preparing for mathematics. Like when I was preparing for my first time, it took me around 6 months to cover the entire syllabus and even after that I had to invest a good amount of time into problem practice and solving PYQs and all the other details which I will come to later. So what I mean to say is, it is an optional which has a very broad syllabus and which takes a certain amount of investment from you. But if you are ready to do that and if you have a good background and interest in mathematics, it is an optional which also provides a high return. We can see that every year like there are toppers who consistently score above 300 plus in mathematics. Even my score is 309 and this year we have a topper who actually secured a, a very high 332 marks in mathematics optional. So in short it is a high investment high return optional. So think about it, think about your background, maybe try uh, doing a few mathematics modules and see if it suits you and if you are finding it comfortable then definitely go for it. So on that note I uh, will go into my preparation strategies. Let me start with book list. So uh, for around 80 to 85 percent of my preparation, I solely depended on IMS notes. IMS as you know is an institute in Delhi and they provide, I would not say extremely great notes, but they provide adequate notes for most subjects. So that is what I primarily depended on. And on top of that, there were some subjects which I found rather difficult. Uh, for example, modern algebra is a good example and even the physics related topics, fluid dynamics was particularly difficult for me. So in those topics which I found difficult, I uh, refer to extra standard books on top of IMS material. Uh, for example, in fluid dynamics, I depended on MD Raisinghania's book. Uh, for modern algebra, I used Khanna and Bambri book. Uh, and I used Krishna series books for problem practice in various topics. And also Malik and Arora. Malik and Arora is a really good standard book for the real analysis and mathematical analysis portions of the syllabus. So when it comes to books, what I would primarily recommend is, you should always, you can always start with IMS notes because they provide a foundational content and good problems in most of the subjects. And if you find it difficult, then you can refer to more standard books because exclusively using standard books for every topic can be very time consuming. And you do not really come, need to do that for every subject because some subjects will be easy for you. Especially if you have a good mathematical background, some of the subjects would already have been covered by you like during your B.Tech studies or during your B.Sc studies. So you would, you would not really need to study another standard book and uh, spend all that time on that. And also recently there are a number of good online sources. One that I would particularly recommend is the Mathocrat YouTube channel. 
again as i was mentioning earlier i was finding it difficult to conceptualize to visualize the physics parts of the syllabus like fluid dynamics mechanics statics and all those parts but after watching mathocrat videos i was able to visualize them better and i was able to gain good insights into how to solve those problems like uh, how to approach a particular problem and how to break that down into modules and then move on to solving it so mathocrat youtube channel and uh, the associated telegram channel is again something which i have used extensively and which i would recommend to all of you dkt upsc cs agar aap keval civil service pariksha ke prelims mains aur interview ke video dekhna chahte hain to subscribe kare dkt upsc csc channel yahan aapko toppers ke video rank ke hisab se arrange milenge channel ke link ke liye description box mein jaye so those are essentially the basic uh, book list and then let's move on to strategy so what i would recommend is uh, a one year strategy is what i usually followed like this is my third attempt but still i mean it can essentially be summed up as three one year uh, rounds of preparation so uh, like we are in july now so what i would recommend is first do a thorough and complete study of the syllabus uh, it took around 6 months for me and i think it can be done decently in 6 to 7 months so if you are starting now by december you should be able to cover the syllabus entirely one uh, complete round of the syllabus and then you can spend like one or two months uh, one two or even three months for a uh, proper revision of the syllabus and when it comes to revision and even when you are studying for the first time always remember that mathematics is a hands on subject like just reading through the theory and just mugging up the formulas won't really help you beyond a point like when we look at the previous year questions we can see that almost 100% of the questions they are all problem oriented so it's only through proper and adequate practice that you can master that skill this is actually something which i faced during my first uh, attempt in uh, uh, upsc like i was fairly well versed in formula i knew most of the theoretical content but my problem practice was inadequate so when it came to the actual exam i had some grave issues in time management i had some real problems in getting to the solution like i know the method i know the formula but there are some practical skills involved in getting to the solution so these shortcomings led to me scoring a very below average mark in my first round so what i would recommend is do not fall into that cycle like uh, from the very first day of your preparation make sure you are providing adequate attention to problem practice on top of studying formally this is something you can that can go hand in hand like whether it be standard books or whether it be the ims notes all of them provide adequate number of inbuilt problems so once you finish a sub topic or once you finish a particular module provide some time on actually doing the problems by hand and when you see take a problem do not go through the solution first like take the problem try to solve it on your own spending a, i mean even spending a bit extra time on that is fine and if you cannot solve that at all only then look at the solution and see where you have gone wrong so problem practice is a very important uh, region of the preparation and another thing which i would strongly stress upon is previous year questions like if we look at the pattern of mathematics paper over the past few years we can see that it's very repetitive like almost the same or very similar questions have been repeating over the years with very minor changes so what i would recommend is make sure you have done every single previous year question of the last 5 or 6 years or even 10 years if it's that if that's possible so once you do that the paper will become very familiar to you even the when you are uh, going to the actual exam and facing the paper you will see that a number of questions are very familiar to you you have done similar problems or sometimes even the same problem with very minor changes already so while you are preparing a subject as soon as you finish the theoretical aspects of it make sure you have exhaustively covered the pyqs and then after prelims when you are revising for the uh, uh, mains exam in the time period between prelims and mains focus almost exclusively on problem practice i mean we'll refer to theory of course whenever necessary but make sure you are spending most of your time on problem practice and specifically on previous year questions and practicing them so that's something i would strongly recommend on and coming to note making we know that mathematics is a very broad subject and referring to all the standard books just in the weeks before the exam is practically impossible so having a set of short and concise notes particularly covering the most important formulae and the most important problem types that can be very helpful to you during your exam you can actually refer to notes by previous toppers i have extensively used notes by kanish kattaria and yogesh sir so those are easily available online so you can refer to them primarily to gain an idea on how to make notes which topics are important which stuff should be actually written down in notes and how to concisely represent formulae in notes 
all this can be learned from the uh, notes prepared by previous toppers like Ataria and if you are really bad at note making you can actually use those notes for your own revision or you can use that to supplement your revision. So regardless of whether you are using your own notes or whether you are using notes by other toppers make sure that you are properly revising them. Try to revise them at least once before prelims and once again after prelims uh, just to make sure that you remember all the formulae because uh, as I will be coming to time management later max is an exam where time management is very crucial like most aspirants like they will be well versed in theoretical subjects and given adequate time they will be able to solve most problems because the problems are not particularly difficult like there are five questions at least four of them can be solved with adequate time but the issue is we are severely short of time we only have three hours to solve all these five questions and all the various subparts so deriving uh, formulae from first principles or actually thinking out a solution might not be feasible in exam setting. So having strong practice and having the formula in your mind and even the brief outlines of solutions to previous problems. So regularly revising those, having those right in your fingertips that can help a lot. This is again something I used to struggle in my previous attempts and this year I was able to improve upon it by first of all making sure that I had practiced almost every PYQ question out there and secondly by making sure that I had adequately revised the notes at least once or twice. So that all the important formulae and all the important derivations and uh, the most popular question types were already known to me and I could uh, reproduce them very fast. So that's again something that I would strongly recommend. And there is another question that I have often been getting about whether we are able to skip some topics while we are studying. So let me first outline the question pattern as most of you would know. The question paper will have 8 questions and we only have to attempt 5 of them. So we will be able to selectively choose some questions and so what I would recommend is if you are finding some topic extremely difficult like for example modern algebra or fluid dynamics which are like very difficult topics uh, you can spend less time on those but at the same time still try to cover the basics even of those subjects because if you are skipping a topic completely that will severely restrict your options. For example if you look at this year's uh, mathematics paper we can see that the questions from fluid dynamics which is a traditionally difficult subject was rather easy and doable this year. But if a person has completely skipped fluid dynamics he or she would not have been able to take advantage of that. So what I would recommend is if you are finding topics too difficult still try to cover the basics, study the basic formulae, uh, try to solve the PYQs and even if you are unable to do it at least look at the solutions and gain a basic understanding of it. So that uh, when questions come from these topics you can try to avoid them using by selecting other topics but in worst case you will still have to attempt them. For example there are two compulsory questions which you will nevertheless have to attempt. So make sure you have that level of understanding and at the same time remember that you have this selection mechanism. So if some topic is extremely difficult or not doable for you, you can skip one topic each from each paper. Do not skip more than that but for one topic each in each paper you can just refer to the basics and uh, skip the more uh, complicated and uh, more difficult content. Ethics with SNSARI remains the best ever choice. Do you know that ethics paper is the only paper in general studies that pays more with less efforts? One can easily secure 130 to 140 marks. Lukman IS is a well established name since 2014 for ethics paper. We offer three types of courses ethics foundation course, ethics case studies and ethics test series. Since 2015, Lukman IAS students have maintained the records of securing the highest marks in this paper. So why to wait? Contact us today for more information. So that is the basics of strategy and on top of that let me also mention that it might initially seem a bit too difficult like uh, for example when you study the syllabus first the some of the PYQs might not become obvious to you and also you might be taking too much time. So what I would recommend is do not worry about that. There is a learning curve to mathematics but uh, what I am sure there is that once you cover the complete syllabus, once you gain a bird's eye view of the mathematics syllabus, things will start to become easier to you. So do not worry about that initial difficulty but at the same time make sure that you are allocating sufficient time to mathematics and especially to problem practice. Problem practice is definitely the key and time management is the success mantra when it comes to mathematics. So after you have covered the syllabus during your first or second revision, uh, first let me provide a basic outline. What I would recommend is finish the first iteration in around 6 months. 
So if you start now, that would be around December. And then in the months of January, February and March, try to do a quick revision. Try to uh, make your own notes or refer to the notes of topers and try to do as many PVQs as, as possible. And then in the last two months before prelims, you can kind of avoid the optional and focus solely on prelim, uh, prelims. So in the months of April and May, focus solely on prelims and that's fine. And then as soon as prelims is over, do not wait to take a break or do not get into a lull. Immediately start preparing for the mains exam. You will have around three or three and a half months. So in that period, do your third revision properly. In that round of revision, focus more on time management, focus more on adapting to the demands of the exam. And joining a good mains the series is very integral there. Because regardless of how good our content is, regardless of how good we are able to solve problems, presentation does matter. We have to make sure that we are presenting the answer in a way that's easy to the evaluator. We are uh, putting all the necessary steps out there that we are making our method or solution clearly obvious to the person who is evaluating the paper. So joining a good main series is really key there. Do that and make sure that you are properly following the timetable and submitting the papers and also improving the answers adaptively based on the feedback. And also in that point of time, even when you are practicing problems in the period between prelims and mains, always keep an eye on time management. Like whenever you are doing a problem, do not focus just on whether you are able to solve that problem. Also focus on how fast you are able to do it. There will be problems where the solution will be fairly obvious to you, but still you will be taking too much time. So note down those areas and do adequate practice to ensure that you are improving your speed in those areas. And another thing which we often tend to ignore is innovative use of calculator. We know that we can take a calculator to the exam and it makes a number of topics very easier. For example, topics like numerical analysis can be easily done using formulas and other uh, advanced methods in calculator. So since spend some time on knowing about your calculator, mastering those techniques about framing equations and solving them in calculator, that time will help you a lot in shaving off some precious minutes in the actual exam. So these are some of the basics in mathematics preparation. I hope you are able to adapt this into your own preparation and eventually become top scorers in the mathematics optional. Good luck to all of you. Thank you.